going on there, YouTube? I'm going to do an unboxing on this. Um, if you've been following along on the Saturday Night videos, I bought a deadbolt here, and I'm basically going to use it for parts. Uh, I hate to do that, but it was really the best deal. I mean, this is ready to run. Um, I haven't had an SCX-10 base rig in, oh, six, seven, eight years. <clears throat> I had a, I think I bought one of the Dingo body way back in the day, and I put a, a, a Tamiya Hilux body on it. And that was back before even uh, RC4 wheel drive had the Mojave version of the, the Hilux. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, I'm excited to, to see it. I mean, I know basically what I'm getting, but I haven't had one, and I, you know, I just figured I'd share it with y'all. I've been, I got this a couple days ago, and I haven't opened it yet. I haven't even broke the seal, so. Um, even though we're going to tear it apart, we're going to take a look through and what you get with the kit, and, um, uh, yeah, just see how it is. All right, so, I'm trying to figure out how this thing opens. It feels soft on that end. <clears throat> enough. Ah, I see how it works. Now this is ready to run. It does have motor ESC. I think it has everything but batteries for the controller, battery for the truck, and the charger. So that stuff's all doable. Just figured it was easier that way for my new build. I, I was looking at used SCX tens, and so many of them are are well used so the price wasn't that far off from you know like 60 bucks more to buy this brand new ready to run truck oh wow it's already on the other too <laughs> well, oh and there went the controller why didn't they just put a window in the box that would have been awesome <laughs> all right so let me get my controller up here and hope it didn't just break when I hit the floor <laughs> Now, with most ready-to-run stuff, this controller is pretty cheapo. Um, it's cool looking. At least it has some foam on the uh, the wheel. It's pretty, pretty simple. Now, I think this is supposed to have a three-channel setup with it. Um, one thing I always like to see is how many batteries does it take. Because with this digital controller, you know, back in the in the '90s when everything was FM or AM receivers, it would take eight batteries, so we're down to four. That's good. Feels good in the hand. It's not the prettiest. We've got some other options here. Just manual trim. And the coolest thing, now that everything's digital, and there's no giant antenna that's going to break. <laughs> so I'm going to set that aside. I mean, this is... Uh, I, you know, I, this is new for me. I'm sure most everybody watching has an SCX-10 or is familiar with all this but I really am not. So in the bottom of the box we've got spare parts. We've got um, we've got a lot of uh, LED uh, light bar pieces. Uh, looks like we got another driver helmet. Another couple heads. <laughs> I have one with the skull. That's pretty rad. Um, these little axial course markers, those are really cool. I've only got two from the other SCX-10 that I had before. <clears throat> I'm not going to open all that stuff up, but y'all know what they are. need to buy a whole bunch more of those so I can actually lay out a course in my yard. So we've got a spare parts bin, spare parts parts, and our instruction manual. I'm going to leave that all sealed because I'm pretty well familiar with the SCX-10. Um, let's see, it's a three channel receiver, so we do have an option for light control or winch or whatever we end up going with. Um, it's tied down. Just like a RC car you would find at Walmart, it's tied to the box. I really thought at least the, uh, the tires and wheels or something wouldn't be on it. I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised to see that it's all together. Oh, there's zip ties, alright. Well, uh, let's cut those. <clears throat> this is really a neat looking truck though. I, like I said, I haven't had one of these since the Dingo. I think that was when the, uh, that was before the uh, 
the JK Jeep bodies came out. So it's been a long time since I've had a axial rig. But I thought this would be the best, easiest, uh, and cheapest option for my custom build. Alright. It's free. <laughs> Alright, so it's a nice looking, uh, nice looking Lexan body. It's good color. I think it's based off of maybe a, a first gen Ford Bronco. It's kind of got that look on the front. Loosely. But uh, I, I like the fact that they're, you know, yeah, it's still Lexan, but you've got a styrene driver, you've got plastic roll cage, you've got a light bar that you can make functional. It's not a not a bad looking body. It looks pretty uh, complete for a for a beginner crawler if you're looking to just get started in the hobby. And I, like I said, I picked this up. This was two ninety nine. I bought it on Amazon. Had free shipping, <clears throat> so you know, ready to run. All you need is a battery, a charger, and so if you already have any other RCs, you can throw a stick pack in it. That bumper is pretty pretty soft, but you know it's cool. It's got a place for uh, D rings and more light light buckets, which I bet the parts are in that extra bin to mount uh, LEDs in there. Pretty good, uh, fair amount of flex. <clears throat> it already has lenses in the, the uh, roof lights. That's pretty cool that, you know, for what it is, it's a beginner entry level RC. Move my lamp out of the way and we'll pull these pins and see what our chassis looks like. I'm planning on using all the running gear. I'm not doing any, <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> Sorry, I'm choking over here. <laughs> Not doing any modifications to the uh, running gear. I want to run just like box stock, but we're going to completely change out the entire chassis. <laughs> so um, we've got a big giant warning label. Disconnect battery when not in use. Will do. We don't have a battery to connect right now anyway. <clears throat> so... Um, Servo sounds, yeah. I won't be able to tell till we get it out. It's got a plastic servo horn, which is probably one of the first things you'll break on the trail. You get bound up on the rocks, and it'll just snap if the servo has enough torque. Uh, I don't know how much torque that servo has. I haven't, I didn't really read up on it. I just this is the best deal, so I jumped on it. Um, battery mounts in the back. We've got the uh, basic. SEX 10 shocks, which I've actually used on a lot of my rigs. I put those on my Trailfinder 2s. They're, they're good shock. They're cheap. A, I think you can get a set of them on eBay brand new for with springs and everything for around 20 25 bucks. all four. And you look at RC four-wheel drives like King shocks and stuff, you're looking 50 bucks a pair. So Or even the Proline, uh, I can't remember what the names are. The Proline shocks, they're, they're pretty pricey too. Uh, I have to change the connector on that. I don't. I don't have anything with that style connector. Um, looking pretty good. This is a A5. I haven't seen any of those. I've got an A2. I think on on my Blazer. It's like a Castle, just an axial branded Castle servo, from what I was told. It's really basic looking stuff. Looks pretty good. I, I always hated all these plastic things, but they, they work. They serve their purpose. These are excellent rock guards. They'll bend and give without breaking. Um, we got our center mounted uh, transmission. And I'm guessing that's a 50... No, what is that? A 27 turn motor. So this thing will be a little, a little peppy, I'm guessing. Just basic stuff. We've got plastic upper and lower links, which will probably not carry over into the new the new platform when I swap all this out. I probably will do <laughs> metal metal links, probably RC four wheel drive stuff since that's what I have the most of. That is pretty uh pretty flimsy there. <laughs> but you know, like I said, this is the entry level kit, so it ain't it ain't bad. 
Drop shafts seem alright. They're uh, at least pretty thick. They feel pretty good. <clears throat> and these are the original, I don't remember what model they are now since they've come out with the SCX 10-2s. These are the original axles and I, I opted for this look. I, I had found a good deal on some SCX 10-2 axles. But I thought these look a little more robust. These things are tried and true. If you can even see that. And they, they look more like a serious axle. And I, I thought that would fit this this build better. <clears throat> even though it's gonna be kind of a rat rod type vibe. It, you know, it's it's still gonna be more of a serious off-roader. It's not gonna be a hardcore crawler. I got corrected in the comments. Uh, apparently hardcore crawlers are only motor on axle type setups, but for me, building the stuff that I build, it's going to be a hardcore crawler. That's why I said it as such. Oh, uh, we've got Maxxis Trepador tires. It's pretty standard SCX-10 stuff. I hate that noise. <laughs> they feel pretty good. We'll find a new purpose for those. I'm guessing they are pre-glued on these wheels. That kind of sucks, but what can you do? Since they are just plastic. Um, another area we'll have to upgrade. The steering link is just as flimsy as the uh, as the four link arms. <clears throat> but all in all, I mean, for what I paid, I'm not disappointed. I I, I knew what I was getting, and um, you know if I. I doubt I can find a use for this body, so I'll probably sell that on eBay and the bumpers and or the bumper doesn't have a rear bumper. I do want to want to do a standard SEX10 based build, but I'm I'm probably going to start with an SEX102, but that's further down the line. That's not a uh, not anytime soon. I've got quite a few builds in the works right now, so I'm not going to jump on that. I almost did it the other night when I was shopping for this. Uh, I had a big giant mess in my shopping cart on the eBay. I had an SEX 10 II. Uh, I think it was a ready to run. I found a good deal on that. And then I had the uh, was it J Concepts or something like that. The the hard body XJ Cherokee body. And I had <laughs> I had like six or seven hundred dollars worth of stuff. And I was like, yeah, I really really shouldn't buy that. I can't spend that much. So I opted for this. I found it on Amazon. Like I said, free shipping. It was two ninety nine. But, uh, yeah, I really wanted to get it out and drive it and try it out before I tear it apart, but I don't think I'm going to have the time. Um, it's Friday night tonight. I usually do my Saturday night videos. I have some special stuff planned for this Saturday, and I have to work today, which is out of the ordinary. I'm usually Monday through Friday, but we have to make do makeup days so we can have more time off around Christmas. It's a big stink, so... I'll get off work a little early, but yeah, the, I won't be driving this. It'll be dark, and uh, hopefully we can start tearing into it here in the next week and get it ready for the rat crawler. Um, if you haven't seen that yet, check out my Friday night video series. I think it's episode four, three? I think it's episode three, when I, I show you some ideas that I've got and a chassis that I'm working on, and uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, this is not, not a bad little rig. You know, if you're you're looking to get in the hobby, I get asked that a lot. There's a lot of folks that are new to crawlers and stuff like that. For 300 bucks, this is, I mean, it's going to be capable. It's completely four-link. It's, it's tried and true. A SEX 10 parts are everywhere. So any of the plastic stuff you break, you can find aluminum or metal, any metal components, custom custom parts, bumpers, bodies, Everybody makes stuff from uh, Proline to RC four wheel drive. There's stuff out there for the SCX tens, and even with the SCX ten two being out as long as it has now, I think uh, it's probably close to a year. I don't I don't know when it came out exactly, but there's still just an unlimited supply of SCX ten parts available. So it's not going anywhere. It's it's tried and true. This was one of the first, the very first real scale-ish crawlers that came out on the market. Now back when I had my three Tamiya high lifts with F-350 bodies and uh, you know the smallest wheel you could get was a 1.9 and there's there was just nothing 
and then bam, here come the SCX-10 on the market, and it really changed the game. And uh, I don't know why I've, I've kind of shied away from them just because all the plastic, but like I said, everything's upgradable, and the STX-10-1 parts in metal have gotten cheaper since the 2 came out as well. So there's still a lot of stuff for it, and it is a, I think it's a very good platform to start with. Because like, you could throw the Hilux body on there, you have to adjust the wheelbase a little bit. You could make the blazer work. I mean, there's just endless possibilities you can do with it. Um, if you haven't seen uh, uh, ESPRC, Josh Coleman out there, or Camping with Coleman, <laughs> he uh, is doing the, he's sponsored by Axial, he's doing the Axial Scale Wars. So he's got a whole series of videos showing viewers builds on SCX-10 based, or Axial based, based rigs, and there's just, they, they can be made very, very scale. Yeah, there's a lot of, a lot, so many options for it, and then just your creativity is the limit. So you just go as wild as you want. Like I said, I, I've always tended to lean more towards RC four-wheel drive stuff just because it, there's more metal to it. And to me, the, the metal leaf springs and stuff like that is, is more realistic. But uh, as far as hardcore crawlers, I mean, the Axial stuff is, you know, every y'all know. Uh, if you're probably watching this, there's probably 90% of y'all have SCX-10s. So I'm just preaching to the choir here. It's a good truck. It's going to be a good foundation for my new build. I'm excited about it. I think I got a pretty good deal on it. I've seen it a lot higher in other places. And hopefully here in the next week, we can tear this bad boy down and start looking at putting these axles and transmission on this. On that frame with that hot rod grill with a cab that you haven't seen yet. So, appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you on the next video.